Hello students, welcome to Vyas Edification Quota. In this series of NCRT discussion, we'll continue further with Mathematics Class 12th. The chapter that we're dealing with currently is Integrals and from this chapter 7 of Class 12th, now is the turn of exercise 7.6. This is a relatively big chapter in Integrals, this particular chapter we cover indefinite integration as well definite integration. So first 6-7 exercises are based on indefinite, after that the exercises are based on definite integration and its properties, right? So we'll be dealing with all of those exercises. This exercise 7.6 is based on indefinite integration and one particular method of integration. That is integration of integration by parts will be discussed here with you. So along with the questions we'll see the method and uh, what all the other important things related to that. So method Integration by parts is not a difficult thing. Integral of fx into gx dx. So integral of product of two functions is equal to first function times integral of second function minus maha integral of derivative of first function into integral of second function, right? So that's what you have, right? So first function keeping constant, integral of second function is involved. Then you differentiate the first function, integrate the second function and you multiply them, take the maha integral of all of those things, right? And uh, those two terms will give you the final integral, right? That's what you see. Along with a few more important things that which function can be taken as a first function, which function can be taken as a second function is what we'll see over here along with the questions, right? So beginning with the first one, what does the question say over here? The first question says integrate x times sin x, right? How do we do that? x times sin x. So integrate x sin x dx. This is the integral that we are looking forward to. Yes. And the rule says, by part says, okay, when we have product of two functions dx. Or you can write it as integral of u v dx where u is fx, g is dx, right? So, in other words, this is also called sometimes also known as uv rule, right? Product of integrals, product of functions and then the integral. This is equal to u times integral v dx minus integral of du by dx times integral v dx and whole integral. This is the result. This result can be derived easily with the help of ideas of product rule of differentiation. The integral can be derived using that. And uh, the important thing over here, two important things, what is that? That in integral v dx, there is no need of to use constant of integration. No, e, no need to use constant of integration, that's what you can say. If I use constant of integration, that is actually redundant. So, it is better that you don't use that integral, a coefficient of integration, constant of integration. The second thing is the choice of u and v. And how do we decide that? There's a rule. For that, okay, this particular rule has been missed in the NCRD, but I'll have to explain that. So, inverse I stands for inverse, L stands for logarithmic, logarithm, A stands for arithmetic, algebraic basically, not arithmetic, algebraic. T stands for trigonometric. And E stands for exponential. This is how you choose functions u and v. So, inverse functions would imply that you have sine inverse x, cosine inverse x. Those are very complicated, right? Logarithm in itself is also complicated. Log x, something related to that. Algebraic will be something related to this. This is x, x power 1, x power 2. There's some x plus 1, x plus 2, something of that sort. Trigonometric functions will be sine x, cosine x and all. Exponential function will be e power x type of things, right? And you see, we are supposed to integrate v. So, v has to be integrable first of all, right? And do you know the integral of logarithm up till now? Frankly speaking, no. do you know the in integral of inverse functions up till now? No. So, v cannot be chosen from here. V has to be chosen from here. Okay. And u, the other function will have to be chosen from here. For example, for example, you have an algebraic function and a trigonometric function. So trigonometric function will be v and algebraic function will have to be taken as u. That's the key behind it. If you have, let's say, logarithmic and trigonometric function. So logarithmic function will have to be taken as u and this function will have to be taken as v. Although logarithmic and trigonometric will rarely encounter that. But this is the order that you have to follow. The rule of I late, right? 
and you can clearly observe since you are integrating v v these functions are easy to integrate right these are difficult to integrate so v has to be chosen from here this side if you have both trigonometric and exponential if you have both trigonometric and exponential still both are easy to integrate but you'll take v as the exponential function the exponential function as v and trigonometric function as u that's what you'll use that's a rule so these are some extra things which you needed and once you are aware of this formula, this particular integral will not be difficult. What we will do is, we will first choose u and v, right? So, algebraic and trigonometric, this will be v and this here will be u. And integral will be, integral of u v dx will be u integral v dx minus derivative of u into integral v dx, right? This is what you will have. So, u remains constant, integral of sin x dx is what I get minus integral of derivative d by dx of this algebraic function x times integral of v dx which is sin x dx and maha integral of this whole expression the big integral of this whole expression what is integral of sin x this is minus cos x right so this becomes minus cos x minus derivative of x is simply one integral this is one integral of sin x Okay, once again, we are not supposed to use, no need of C, right? No need of constant of integration and integral of V dx. This is minus of cos x dx. This is what you have, right? And after this, this is minus x cos x, which is okay. This becomes plus integral of cos x, which is sin x plus constant. And yes, constant of integration will occur now. After this final integral, you will get, you will write that constant of integration. And this is my final answer for this question over here as you can clearly see is that okay yes if you want you can verify using differentiation what is that differentiate this so differentiation this will uh, differentiation of minus x cos x will be minus of cos x keeping cos x constant derivative one minus x derivative of cos x will be sin x with a minus and derivative of sin x will be cos x constant term derivative will be zero this term goes with this and this is what remains that is the integrand right that is the integrand and yes that the integral of this will be this function that has been verified. This is a complete solution and these are some points, important points related to integration by parts. That's the solution and answer of this question. In the second question, we have x times sine 3x. How do we integrate this? So once again, you have algebraic and trigonometric function. The choice of u and v is important. Trigonometric will be taken as v. This will be taken as u. So integral of x times sine 3x dx will be equal to what the first function is taken as constant integral of sine 3x is what will required minus integral of derivative of x integral of sine 3x and maha integral of this whole expression right this is what you get x is okay integral of sine 3x will be minus cos 3x and since this is a linear function of x we will have to divide by this 3 yes minus integral of this is 1 integral of sine 3x will be minus cos 3x upon 3 dx this is what you have this is what you have minus cos 3x by 3 okay and now what next so this is minus 1 by 3 x cos 3x this is minus minus plus 1 by 3 which is okay integral of cos 3x will be sin 3x by 3 plus constant okay this becomes 1 by 9 sin 3x yes you can write it as this this is minus 1 by 3 x cos 3x plus 1 by 9 sin 3x plus constant and that is the required answer for this question over here yes in the third question we have x square e power x okay there's exponential function and an algebraic function so we know that this is easy to integrate this will be v and this will be u right or not yes okay so i which is equal to integral of x square e power x dx will be equal to what x square will be taken as constant integral of e power x dx minus integral of derivative of x square is what we are interested in integral of e power dx e power x dx 
and complete integral of this whole expression, right? That's the formula. So first function, integral of second function minus derivative of first function into integral of second function, take a mod integral of this second term. x square is okay, e power x, the integral is e power x minus derivative of x square is 2x, integral of e power x is e power x dx, this is what you have. Ooh. x square has reduced to e x now, but here also we have two different types of functions and integration again will involve by parts, another step of by parts. This x square e power x is okay, minus this 2 can be taken out and the integral of x into e power x will follow that same trend. This is the first function times integral of second function minus derivative of first function integral of second function and maha integral of this. Yes, this is what you get. So this is x square times e power x minus this is 2 and in the bracket you have x times e power x. Is that okay? Yes. Minus integral of this is 1, integral of e power x is again e power x dx. This integral is e power x, right? So 1 into e power x is e power x, so this bracket becomes this e power x. Is that okay? Yes. x square times e power x minus 2x e power x and minus of minus plus 2 is what I get. Integral of this is e power x plus a constant of integration will be added at the end. And this is my final answer for this question or I can write it as e power x if you can observe it can be taken out common x square minus 2x plus 2 is what I get plus a constant and that is my final answer for this particular question. Is that okay? Yes, this is what you get. What else? Is there any other approach of handling this? Yes, there is one very unique approach for handling this kind of question related to e power x and algebraic integral, right? So if you have algebraic function, algebraic or basically a polynomial, not algebraic, or basically a polynomial can be handled easily. How do you do that? So there's one important result, right? Which is given once again in the NCRD and we'll see some questions based on that as well. But that approach is e power x fx plus f prime x dx. This integral is equal to what? This integral is e power x times f of x plus constant. This is very interesting. This can be derivative e power x into fx plus e power x into f prime x. This is what you'll get. Once you differentiate e power x, that is e power x times fx, then you differentiate fx, which is f prime x. So e power x fx, e power x f prime x is what you get as the integral derivative. So integral of this expression will be this. That's what you can observe, right? And this particular result can be derived directly with the help of biparts. These all rules of biparts. But what's the use of this over here? Okay, in case you have a polynomial, e power x with a polynomial x square. So a derivative of a polynomial will also be a polynomial, right? Yes. So we try to, instead of this x square, we try to create something of this sort. fx plus f prime x over here. And how do we do that? We add or subtract certain things. We add or subtract certain things. If this is fx, then f prime x will have 2x, right? So we'll add a 2x. The derivative will have extra 2x, right? Oh, but there's no 2x over here. Yes. And to take care of this added 2x, we'll have to subtract 2x. That's the first step, right? But then this becomes a part of fx. So its derivative should be present over here. Yes. Derivative, that is f prime x. We are looking to create f prime x over here. For this term, for this particular term, you can see that Derivative is 2x, but to take care of this extra 2x, we added, we added something over there and therefore we need to subtract that certain thing minus 2x. So now fx, we go a step further and since we are getting this new term as fx, we'll have to create the derivative once again, take a look at the derivative. x square, the derivative is 2x, yes, and minus 2x, the derivative is minus 2. So this should be the derivative, yes. But then what happened to this minus 2? Where does this minus 2 come from? Can we subtract minus 2 just like that? No, we'll have to add minus 2, right? This is what you get. So you started with x square e power x, yes. And you wrote it as x square minus 2x minus 2 plus 2x. This is plus 2, right? My x square minus 2x plus 2 plus 2x minus 2. And why did you do that? 
because you wanted to create along with fx f prime x in case of polynomial this can be handled easily and the derivative of this whole expression now the derivative of this whole expression do you observe that this is this oh how do you do that x squared derivative is 2x minus 2x derivative is this 2 is derivative is 0 right and if this is fx this is f prime x the integral of this whole expression with respect to x will be equal to e power x times fx Is this what we have been doing? Yes. Is that what we got over there? Please check that answer. e power x times x square minus 2x plus 2. Yes. This is pretty simple, sir. A pretty short approach, but may not be so simple for some of you. With practice, with ample practice, you'll get this completely, right? And let's take a look at this complete thing once again. Over here, what did we do? We started with e power x times x square. Let's take a look at it again. We wanted to create in the bracket along with e power x, we wanted to create two particular functions. This is, if this is fx, this should be f prime x, right? That's our goal. So we have only x square over here. So that has to be a part of fx. First of all, why? Because if that becomes a part of f prime x, we'll only increase the powers, right? We'll never decrease the powers of x over here. So x square and its derivative, which will be simply 2x comes over here. Okay, this whole expression should have been equal to x square. So, this extra 2x which has been added should be subtracted from somewhere. And you cannot subtract it over here only. These are two separate terms. You have to subtract from here only, right? So, now x square minus 2x plus 2x is equal to x square. That's also okay. But, do we have the derivative of this over here? No. x square minus 2x, the derivative is 2x minus 2. But then, is this equal to this? No. We'll have to add a 2 over here. So you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth a few times and you reach this stage. Now the derivative is this and this whole is equal to this. Yes. So x square has been written as this where fx and f prime x can be clearly seen. And the integral will be e power x times fx, right? That's what you get. Oh, but we have solved using this long approach. This is useful, right? In the board examination for the NCID people, you will solve using this approach. But in the competitive exams, this is what you'll be using. Yes, that's the final solution for this particular question over here. In the fourth question, we have x log x. And now, now, you will not be worried with the fact that logarithm is something for which we don't know the integral yet, right? So, that's not very complicated to observe that. This is algebraic, this is logarithm. So, what we'll be doing is, we'll take this function over here as u. And this integral is known, we'll take this function as v. So, integral of x log x dx will be equal to, you will take log x as a constant times integral of x dx minus integral of d by dx log x times integral of x dx my integral with respect to x. This is what you have, right? First function, integral of second function, derivative of first function, integral of second function and my integral with the minus in the front, right? log x is okay this integral of x is x square by 2 minus what is this derivative of log x what is that 1 by x integral of x is x square by 2 and my integral with respect to x is what i get right this is x square by 2 log x minus what is this this is actually x by 2 you get x square upon x which is x by 2. So 1 by 2 will come out common. Integral of x is what you are interested in which is x square by 2 plus constant. Right. So this becomes x square by 2 log x minus x square upon 4 plus constant. And yes, that is the required answer for this particular question over here. Is that all? Yes, that's all in this question. In the fifth question, we have x log 2x. Okay. What's new in this? There's nothing new in this. Once again, this is the second function which can be integrated. This is the first function. So integral of x log 2x dx will be equal to what? So log 2x will be constant. Integral of x dx is what we are interested in. And integral of x dx is nothing but x square by 2. We can find that, right? We don't need a constant now. Let's use that x square by 2 minus derivative of log 2x d of log 2x by dx. What is that? 1 upon 2x and uh, is that all? 
you'll have to multiply with the 2 because you'll have to apply the chain rule. So 1 upon 2x times 2 which becomes 1 upon x. Okay. So the derivative of log 2x is also 1 by x. Yes, that's what we see. So this is 1 by x, okay, and this is x square by 2, which is the integral dx. This is what you have. First function, integral of second function, minus derivative of first function, integral of second function is what you get, right? This becomes x square by 2 log 2x is what you get. Over here, minus this 1 by 2 comes out, yes, and you get x square upon x, which is x. The integral becomes x square by 2. So this becomes 4, 1 by 4, this plus constant. And that is the required answer for this particular question. x square by 2, log 2x minus x square by 4 plus constant is the final answer for this question, as you can see over here. Using these few things and obviously the formula for integration by parts. In the sixth question, we have x square log x. Once again, formula. Formula says integral of uv dx is equal to u times integral v dx minus integral of derivative of u integral of v dx this and here the first function will be first this will be u and this will be v so we need du by dx which will be equal to what derivative of log x which is 1 upon x and you need integral of v dx what is that? Integral of x square dx, which is x cubed by 3. This is what you'll need, right? So therefore, integral of x square log x dx is equal to what? This is equal to first function log x times integral of x square, which is x cubed by 3. So after certain point of time, what you'll see is that integral of x square is not difficult. So what you'll do is, you remember this formula, you'll like to release this stage after identifying that this here is u and this here is v. After identifying this, write this as this minus integral of derivative of log x, which is 1 by x. Oh, we have found that, yes. Integral of x square, which is x cubed by 3 dx is what you'll write it as. And this becomes x cubed by 3 log x. What is this? 1 by 3 goes away. This is x square, right? x cube upon 3 is x square. Integral will be x square by 3. There's already 3 over there. x square by 9 plus constant is what I get over here. This is my final answer for this question. From here, I'll directly take this with the help of identifying this. At max, I'll need the derivatives and the integrals, which we have already found, or which are very easy to find, as you can see over here. Is that all? Yes, that's all. In the seventh question, we have x times sine inverse x. Okay, there's an inverse function and there's algebraic function. So, you know what to do. Integral of u, v, u, or you can say integral, of, since this is u, v rule, let's write u times v only. So, integral of u times v dx is equal to u times integral v dx. dx dx this is what you have right okay and in this particular function do you observe the integral of x sine inverse x dx for i equals this do you observe that this is more complicated and this is simpler this will be v and this will be u u which is sine inverse x will remain as it is integral of x is x square by 2 minus integral of Derivative of sine inverse x is we are interested in. Derivative of sine inverse x is 1 upon root 1 minus x square. Okay. And integral of x, which is x square by 2 plus constant is what I'll be getting, right? Now, integrating this may be slightly long. And let's see where does that take us. So, x square by 2 sine inverse x. Before this, we have learned partial fractions. We have learned algebraic expressions and integrals. And let's see where does that take us. So this is minus 1 by 2 integral of x square root 1 minus x square. This is what you get. Okay. So what next? This has been integrated. But what about the integral of this? Now this will create a lot of problems. Had there been a linear at the top, this is one form which we have already seen. But this x square upon root 1 minus x square will be difficult. Now what will you do in this case is you can write this x square as 1 minus x square with a minus. Okay, this becomes x square minus 1 will be taken care of by this plus 1. 
and there's a root of 1 minus x square this converts to what this converts to minus 1 upon root 1 minus x square okay that's pretty simple that is easy to integrate plus 1 upon just a moment just a moment just a moment this is minus of 1 minus x square right this is what you have not 1 this is 1 minus x square over there 1 upon root 1 minus x square and yes this is sine inverse x but what about this this converts to minus of root 1 minus x square plus 1 upon root 1 minus x square and do we know we know the integral of this one which is sine inverse x that's not difficult but what about the integral of this one now this particular thing by the way can be found easily but uh, this is xi 7.6 right and such kinds of expressions such kinds of expressions which are of the form under root of a square minus x square dx this the integral of this has not been covered up till now actually and this will be covered in the next exercise as you can see over in the NCRD, in the next exercise this will be covered i'll give you the formula over here first of all and then then i'll give you another method of handling this by the way when you encounter this question in general you'll use this method and then this formula only using this approach right therefore i've solved with this approach but then i'll give you another method for this exercise specifically for this exercise 7.6 if you don't know this formula then what will you do so for that let's continue further and the formula of this what will this be okay this is x by 2 under root of a square minus x square mind you i'm directly leaving the formula over here which will be covered in the next exercise this minus a square sorry plus a square by 2 under root of a square minus x square plus constant is what you'll need sorry under root of this is not this this is sine inverse x over here this is what you'll have so under root of a square minus x square dx is x by 2 under root of a square minus x square plus a square by 2 sine inverse x plus c is what you'll get and this expression is equal to this which is equal to this plus this this can be integrated with this plus this is sine inverse x directly right that's the approach that you can follow and get the answer but then for exercise from the point of view of exercise 7.6 what will we do so for that for that there's another idea right let's get rid of this whole thing and then solve it using another approach what is the other approach so i which is equal to integral of x sine inverse x dx such kinds of questions can be tackled with a substitution first what is our substitution the sine inverse x is a problem creating thing right so can i take sine inverse x as some new variable right can i replace sine inverse x by theta that tells me okay x will be equal to sine theta and dx will be equal to cos theta times d theta yes or no yes therefore i will be equal to integral of x which is sine theta sine inverse x which is theta dx which is cos theta d theta oh now it becomes algebraic and trigonometric right yes integral of theta times sine theta cos theta is sine 2 theta by 2 so there's a 1 by 2 outside d theta now this is algebraic and trigonometric this function can be taken as v and this here can be taken as u and now i can apply by parts again once again by parts so therefore i will be equal to 1 by 2 in the bracket right 1 by 2 is outside so in the bracket first function which is theta times integral of sine 2 theta which is minus cos 2 theta by 2 this is the integral of sine 2 theta this is what you have right minus integral of derivative of this first function which is 1 integral of the second function which is minus cos 2 theta by 2 d theta is what i'll get right or not this is what i'll get half is okay this goes inside this becomes minus theta by 2 cos 2 theta okay that's one thing and uh, what is this half goes over here half is already over here 1 by 4 minus minus will become plus plus 1 by 4 integral of cos 2 theta d theta is what i'm getting over here this further becomes equal to minus theta by 2 cos 2 theta cos 2 theta the integral is sine 2 theta by 2 so this becomes 1 by 8 sine 2 theta plus constant but is this the final answer no we'll have to replace every theta in terms of x okay and we know that theta 
is equal to sin inverse x. This is okay. What about cos 2 theta? In terms of sin theta, if I write, I'm able to write that and become simple, right? So this is minus theta by 2 cos 2 theta in terms of sin theta. You have to write in terms of sin theta so that I can replace it with x, right? Cos 2 theta is equal to, you remember, this is equal to 1 minus 2 sin square theta plus 1 by 8. What is sin 2 theta equal to? Sin 2 theta is sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta times cos theta. And what is cos theta equal to? In terms of sin theta, you know that cos theta is equal to 1 minus sin square theta in the under root. So I'll write it as, okay, you can write it as cos theta only plus a constant of integration. So we began with this theta times sin 2 theta and you have taken first function as u, second function, sorry, uh, this first function u, second function sin 2 theta, which is easy to integrate. Theta remains as it is integral of sin 2 theta, then minus, this is also okay, you have integrated this, then you have multiplied this. Okay, this becomes 1 by 4, this also becomes 1 by 4, take care of that. This is 4 over here, yes. This is supposed to be 4, this is not 2. And similarly, this is also 4, this is also 4, right, take care of that. And what else, is there any other error? Please check that, cos 2 theta integral will be sin 2 theta by 2. So you, this becomes a 4, and now this becomes a 4, this is a 4, right. And after this, we have to replace theta with x. So let's do it, let's do it. Theta in terms of x will be equal to what? So you have minus 1 by 4, okay, let's keep that 1 by 4 separate, take this minus inside, this becomes 2 sin square theta minus 1, which is 2 x square minus 1. What about this theta? This theta is equal to sin inverse x, can you observe that? This is sin inverse x. And what else? This is 1 by 4, sin theta, sin theta is x. And this cos theta, what is cos theta equal to? Cos theta is equal to... 1 minus sin square theta under the root, which is 1 minus x square under the root. Plus constant. And that is my required answer for this question. Using this approach over here. Okay, this approach involved initial substitution of this sin square theta, sin inverse x equal to theta. What else after that? There was another approach which we discussed in between in the initial stages. And that approach involved that extra formula, which will be discussed in the next exercise, right? But in general, such kind of questions involving algebraic and inverse functions for such kinds of things you will take integral of x and derivative of sin inverse x all right so first function will be this second function will be this for which integral is simple in that approach in the previous approach that we saw right in the initial stages and for that you'll need one more formula which is under root of a square minus x square in general i think that's pretty simple this is also simple that is also simple and you should be aware of both the approaches over here. That's the complete solution and the final answer of this question over here. Moving on to the next question, that is question number 8 says, integrate x tan inverse x. And how do we do that? So, we've seen by parts, yes. And x tan inverse x can be integrated by taking, identify the first function and the second function properly. But in the previous question, you saw x sin inverse x, right? And there lied some issues in integrating that particular expression. Here, for tan inverse x, you'll have at max 1 upon 1 plus x square, right? So, uh, let us we'll, may not face that same issue over here, that extra formula that we required, right? So, let's continue by taking this as the complicated first function and this as the second function, okay? And integral of uv dx is equal to what? That is equal to u times integral v dx minus my integral of derivative of u integral v dx dx this is what we have right this is what we are interested in so therefore integral of x tan inverse x is equal to tan inverse x times integral of x integral of x is x square by 2 minus integral of derivative of tan inverse x which is 1 upon 1 plus x square, okay? And then you have x square by 2 over here, which is integral of x dx. This is what you need, right? So this becomes, okay, this is x square by 2 tan inverse x minus, what is this? There's a 2 over here, so 1 by 2 will come over here. Integral, there's a x square and there's 1 plus x square over here with respect to x, okay? Can you see that I can add a 1 over here and a subtract a 1 over here to divide this whole expression? Yes, that is something which I can do. Yes. On the basis of this, therefore, therefore, I will be equal to integral, sorry, 
you've already reached the stage of this i is x square by 2 tan inverse x okay minus 1 by 2 is okay and in the integral you have x square plus 1 upon x square plus 1 is 1 minus 1 upon 1 plus x square dx this is what you have is that okay yes okay so this is x square by 2 tan inverse x minus 1 by 2 and this integral becomes x minus tan inverse x plus a constant of integration that's what you get that's the final integral yes that is very very close to the final answer minus x by 2 is what i get plus 1 by 2 tan inverse x plus c can you merge these two terms having tan inverse yes so what do we have x square by 2 1 by 2 which is actually x square plus 1 by 2 tan inverse x minus x by 2 plus constant and that is the required answer for this particular question over here as you can see clearly right that's the eighth question for us the ninth question says integrate x cos inverse x okay <coughs> now in cos inverse we'll have an issue similar to we had in sine inverse if we directly apply by parts so first what we'll do is we'll make a substitution what's the substitution that we would like to make i is integral of x cos inverse x dx so let this cos inverse x is a pretty complicated stuff so let cos inverse x is equal to t let cos inverse x is equal to t once you are through with this then you can say that if cos inverse x is t then cos t is equal to x or you can say that minus sin t dt is equal to dx differentiating this right so i get the value of dx i get cos inverse x and i get x therefore i becomes equal to what integral of x x is cos t cos inverse x which is t so let's write a t and dx which is minus sine t dt this is what you get right this is the complete expression and you can take a minus common from here integral of as well as divide by 2 multiply by 2 this becomes 2 sin t cos t which is sin 2 t t times sin 2 t dt is what i have now right and after this i'll apply by parts for by parts identifying the first function and the second function with the help of that highlight rule is important and trigonometric function will be integrated and this will be differentiated algebraic function right so applying by parts what is the formula for by parts integral of u v dx is equal to u times integral v dx minus derivative of u integral v dx dx this is what you have right okay so now now therefore i will be equal to integral of minus 1 by 2 which is okay in the bracket i'll have integral of u v dx will be u times integral v dx integral of sine 2t will be minus cos 2t upon 2 divided by this 2 right this is what you'll have minus maha integral of derivative of t which is 1 integral of this which is minus of cos 2t upon 2 dt this is what you'll have this equals what do we have minus 1 by 2 okay let's keep this over here this is minus 1 by 2 or minus t by 2 cos 2t and here what do we have minus minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 will come around and this is plus 1 by 2 integral of cos 2t dt okay this is what we have over here what next now this has been simplified enough this becomes minus t by 4 cos 2t okay minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 is minus 1 by 4 is what i'll get integral of cos 2t is sine 2t upon 2 plus constant is the final answer the only thing that remains is to replace t in terms of x again so t as you can see will be cos inverse x so this is minus of cos inverse x upon 4 what is cos of 2t cos 2t will be in terms of cos t i can write it as 2 cos square t minus 1 so that becomes 2 x square minus 1 this is minus 1 by 4 and this becomes 2 sin t cos t so 2 cos t is okay and sin t can be written so write it as minus 1 by 4 2 gets cancelled cos t will be x 
and sin t will be under root of 1 minus x square plus constant that is the required answer for this question as you can see behind me over here the 10th question has sin inverse x square okay and how will we handle this once again sin inverse x square the first thought that comes is okay i don't know the integral so what will i do in general if i get this kind of a question what i'll think is of something called by parts by taking the second function maybe as one the second function could be taken as one for that matter right so one and sin inverse x square that is one of the ideas that you can follow okay and uh, when i differentiate this sin inverse x square i'll get two times sin inverse x root of one minus x square over there and there will be a x in the numerator as well because of integrating that one okay so 2x sin inverse x upon root of 1 minus x square okay and after that i'll have to apply by parts again yes i'll have to apply by parts again that will make it complicated yes but could be solved in that way right another approach could be to use substitution directly let's begin with using substitution for that matter so sin inverse x if it is taken as t so sin inverse x square will become t square and uh, what you'll get is t is equal to sin t and therefore sorry sin t is equal to x and dx will be equal to yes that will be simplified so i which is equal to integral of sin inverse x square dx we begin with substitution first right so let sin inverse x is equal to okay that tells me x will be equal to sin t and dx will be equal to cos t dt this is what you will get right therefore i is equal to integral of this is sin inverse x which is t square dx is cos t dt that's what you get right is that okay yes and now we'll think of applying by parts this is trigonometric this is algebraic this will be taken as u this will be taken as v first function second sorry first function and second function this one right and the integral will be first function times integral of second function integral of cos t is simply sin t minus integral of derivative of first function integral of second function dt this is what you'll get okay that's pretty simple next that tells me therefore i becomes equal to integral of i becomes equal to t square sin t which is simple minus this 2 will come out from here integral of t times sin t is what i have dt and at this stage again i need to apply by parts and how will i apply by parts this will be integrated and this will be differentiated Good. so let's continue with this which tells me i is equal to t square sin t so we need to apply by parts here as well twice going directly would also allow, uh, ask us to apply by parts twice but the expressions will be a bit complicated over there here the expressions look pretty simple t square sin t minus two times in the bracket you get first function integral of second function which is minus cos t minus derivative of first function times integral of second function which is minus cos t dt this is what you'll be getting this is what you get right okay now t square sin t remains as it is and minus 2 remains as it is in the bracket you have minus t cos t and here you have plus minus and minus become plus integral of cos t which is sin t bracket closed plus a constant of integration will be coming over here this becomes t square sin t is okay plus 2t cos t and minus 2 sin t plus constant of integration is what i'll be getting right this is what you get now if you observe sin t is x sin t will be x cos t will be under root of 1 minus sin square t which is under root of 1 minus x square t is sin inverse x so i can replace each and every term over there sin t is x t square is sin inverse x squared plus 2 times cos t. Cos t is under root of 1 minus sin square t. t is sin inverse x. And minus 2 sin t is x. 2x plus constant of integration. That is my required answer for this particular question over here. 
as you can see. In the 11th question, we have x cos inverse x upon under root of 1 minus x square. Now, how do we handle this? So, one of the ideas is, if you observe this x upon under root of 1, x, 1 minus x square, this is some function for which we can find the integral, right? If we go about finding the integral, we can find that integral easily. Okay, and we can integrate that particular function basically, right? That's what we can do. What about cos inverse x? Cos inverse x can be taken as a first function, right? We can take cos inverse x as first function. So, let us take a look at, let us take a look at integral of x upon root 1 minus x square. You need the derivative of this, which is minus 2x. So, you multiply with minus 2 and you divide with minus 2. So, 1 minus x square can be substituted as t. I will substitute 1 minus x square as t and get minus 2x dx as dt. Okay, this becomes dt upon root t. So, t power minus 1 by 2, the integral will be t power 1 by 2 upon 1 by 2. Minus 1 by 2 is okay. The integral will be t power 1 by 2 upon 1 by 2 plus constant. What does that equal to? So, this 2 goes minus square root of t which is 1 minus x square plus constant is what I get. So, this is what the integral of x upon root of 1 minus x square looks like. This is what you'll get, right? Now, for integrating this function, i equals integral of, you have cos inverse x, you have x upon root of 1 minus x square dx. You can take this as v and you can take this as u, right? First function and second function. Once you do it, so the integral becomes equal to what? Therefore, i becomes equal to first function cos inverse x times integral of this, integral of this is this, minus root of 1 minus x square, okay. What about constant? We don't use the constant at this stage, right? It is redundant. Minus integral of derivative of cos inverse x, what is that? Minus 1 upon root of 1 minus x square, okay. And integral will be minus under root of 1 minus x square dx is what I will get, right? This is the Maha integral, okay. And what do we have? minus root of 1 minus x square cos inverse x and this becomes a minus integral of this becomes plus 1 dx okay so minus root of 1 minus x square is okay cos inverse x is also okay minus x plus constant is what i'll be getting in this particular question and that's the final answer with the help of this you get the final answer easily for this particular question 12th question says x sec square x and how do we integrate this it does not seem difficult at all you see sec square x the integral is known and this is al algebraic and trigonometry you take v as this u as this first function will be algebraic second function will be trigonometric we know the integral of this right so i becomes equal to integral of x sec square x dx which is first function times integral of sec square x what is that tan x minus Integral of derivative of x, which is 1. Integral of sec square x, which is tan x dx. This is what you get, right? And integral of tan x is something that we know from our concepts up till now. This is log mod sec x plus constant. That is the required answer for this question over here. Question number 13 says integrate tan inverse x. Now, how do we integrate tan inverse x over here? If you take a look at this, the important thing is, okay, there's only one function, but then we know how to handle this. That is i, which is integral of tan inverse x dx can be handled by taking another function as one. Yes. So this is inverse function. This is algebraic function, you can say. And yes, this is something for which we do not know the integral, but we know the derivative, right? So I'll differentiate this. This is the first function. And this here is the second function. Once we take 1 as the second function, integration is very simple for that. And what you get is first function times integral of second function, which is integral of 1 x minus integral of derivative of tan inverse x, which is 1 upon 1 plus x square integral of this is this dx is what I get. Okay. This is x tan inverse x, which is okay. 
minus what is this? Oh, you need to integrate linear upon quadratic, yes. So you want to create the de derivative of the denominator in the numerator. So 1 plus x squared, the derivative is 2x. So you multiply by it, you divide by 2, you multiply by 2. This is what you get. Okay. And if I put x 1 plus x squared as t over here, over here, if I put 1 plus x squared as t, that tells me, okay, 2x dx will be equal to dt. This is what you'll have. Therefore, i becomes x tan inverse x remains as it is. Okay, and minus 1 by 2 is also okay. Integral of dt upon t is what I get, which is log modulus t, which is 1 plus x square plus constant. This should be my final answer. This is my final answer for this question. Just that 1 plus x square is always positive, so you can use a modulus or you may not use a modulus. You can write brackets as well. And that is the required answer for this question. Right? What I've done is 2x dx becomes dt and this is t. So dt upon t, the integral will be log mod t, which I've directly written from here. That is the answer for this 13th question. 14th question says x log x square. Okay, so we are interested in integrating this function. And how do we do that? I equals x log x square integral with respect to x, right? So this is a complicated function. Let's take this as u and let's take this as v, right? This is what you'll do, okay? And uh, the integral of this is simple. Logarithmic function is difficult. So let's take logarithmic function as the first function. This square, integral of x is x square by 2. This is what you get. Yes or no? Yes. Minus integral of derivative of log x square. Now square of log x, the derivative will be 2 times log x. And then chain rule says, okay, derivative of log x will be 1 by x. What about integral? Integral is this x square by 2 dx is what I get. This 2 goes away. This x goes away. So you get x log x dx over here. Okay, this is x square by 2 log x square minus. This is integral of x log x. Okay. And once you reach this stage, you realize, okay, we, we need to apply by parts again. So let's do it. This is u and this is v. First function, second function. And therefore, i will be equal to x square by 2 log x square minus what do we have? In the brackets, you'll have first function, which is log x times second function, integrated x square by 2 minus integral of first function's derivative which is 1 upon x times second function's integral which is x square by 2 dx. This is what you get in the curly brackets. Right. So this function further becomes x square by 2 log x squared and this here is minus x square by 2 log x. Okay. And minus of minus becomes a plus and this is a 1 by 2 over here, you get x in the integral, the integral will be x square by 2 plus constant. This is the final integral that you will get. Okay, this can be combined together to write x square upon 4. We can write it as x square upon 4, but that is what you get, right? I can also represent this in another way. x square by 2, if you see, that term comes out common throughout. And what you get is log x square minus log x plus 1 by 2 plus constant. This is what you get. Right? That's another version of writing, another way of writing that same thing throughout. Right? This is what you get. That's my final answer. This or this is my final answer for this 14th question over here. In the 15th question, we have x square plus 1 times log x. Okay? So once again, x square plus 1 is easy to integrate. Okay? So we'll take this as the integrable function v and this as u, the first function u. So i equals log x times 1 plus x square dx integral. This is what you are interested in. Log x is the first function. So the integral will be first function times integral of this 1 plus x square. What is that? x plus x cube by 3 minus Derivative of log x, which is 1 upon x times integral will be x plus x cube over 3 dx is what I get. This is what you get. Right. What else? So this becomes x plus x cube upon 3 
times log x which remains as it is minus what is this integral of 1 by x times x is 1 plus x square by 3 dx is what I get this is what I get and integrating this is not difficult right therefore i becomes equal to x plus x cube upon 3 log x minus what is this integral of 1 is x minus okay plus in the bracket plus integral of x square is x power 3 upon 3 so there's already 3 so x power 3 upon 9 is what it becomes plus constant that is the required answer for this question as you can see over here right that's the final answer for this 15th question in the 16th question we have e power x and sin x plus cos x right so such kinds of function can be solved with a very very special idea what is that special integral e power x fx plus f prime x if you have this as integrand then the integral of this particular expression will be e power x times fx plus constant right very special this is what you'll have once you're through with this once you know this much then what you can do is okay we have e power x we have sin x plus cos x can you identify e power x once you see that e power x think in terms of this particular type of thing along with e power x if you have different types of functions which are by the way you can say one it looks like the derivative of the other so we can use this idea i is integral of e power x sin x is okay sin x the derivative is equal to cos x okay if this is f then this automatically becomes then this automatically becomes f prime right if this is function sin x then this becomes derivative of this is sin de derivative of sin x right and integral can be written directly as e power x times fx which is sin x plus a constant of integration that is my answer directly right using this result using this result which is result given in the ncrt yes this is this is one of the results given in the ncrt therefore we are using we are using this special integral directly okay 16th then you have 17th e power x times x upon 1 plus x square so once again once again once we have e power x over there i would like to use that idea which we have just discussed right this is x upon 1 plus x squared dx i would like to create function and its derivative in the bracket somehow okay this is i i want to create e power x along with e power x i want to create fx and f prime x in the bracket if you see there's a 1 plus x square in the denominator yes so if you have something some square in the denominator it would have been obtained by something called 1 plus x some some term having some function having 1 plus x in the denominator that would have differentiated to give you this right so i need to reduce this power to get another function first of all right reduce this power in the denominator for that i need to create x plus 1 in the numerator right 1 plus x x plus 1 so let's do it e power x is okay integral of this becomes 1 plus x minus 1 let's write the numerator as this we add a 1 we subtract a 1 in the denominator you have 1 plus x squared okay dx is okay this further tells me e power x is okay there's a bracket over there not an integral integral is outside right so this is integral of e power x in the bracket you get 1 plus x upon 1 plus x square which is 1 upon 1 plus x minus 1 upon 1 plus x square so i tried to create function and its derivative but let's see what where does that bring me that brings me at this location and do i observe that if this is 1 upon 1 plus x what's the derivative of this so this is actually 1 plus x power minus 1 the derivative will be minus 1 upon 1 plus x square yes so if this is function f do you observe that this overall is f prime only minus 1 upon 1 plus x square is f prime and therefore 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 i becomes equal to e power x times fx what is fx 1 upon 1 plus x plus constant using obviously using e power x fx plus f prime x in the bracket if you see this in the integrand the integral will be e power x fx plus c so this is the final answer using this right using this 
That's my final answer for this question number 17th. In the 18th question, we have 1 plus sin x over 1 plus cos x. How do we handle this? There's an e power x as well, right? So, I recall that integral of e power x times fx plus f prime x dx is equal to e power x fx plus c. If I manage to create this along with e power x, I'll write the integral directly. This is derived using the idea of biparts. But you see that a very, very interesting and easy and as well as important result comes out from that idea of biparts, right? Okay. Easy, yes, this looks pretty easy. Once I manage to create this, integration is direct, right? And uh, important because lots of questions are based on this. And interesting because <laughs> you're not actually integrating anything, you've just memorized the result kind of a thing and you're able to integrate some complicated functions with the help of that. So what do I have over here? I have 1 plus sin x over 1 plus cos x. Now if I see 1 plus cos x, can I separate them out into two terms? Frankly speaking, 1 upon 1 plus cos x looks like something, but sin x upon 1 plus cos x, is that the derivative of this? No. If you have 1, 1 upon 1 plus cos x somewhere, so 1 upon 1 plus cos x, the derivative will be, you'll have a square in the denominator and the derivative, right? So directly it may not be equal. So we'll have to convert into some other angles. Let's say, let's say we have 1 plus cos x. Can we simplify 1 plus cos x and write it as 2 cos square x by 2? Yes. We'll convert into half angles. Yes, that's to it. So i is equal to integral of e power x. We have 2 cos square x by 2. 1 plus cos x is equal to 2 cos square x by 2 in the denominator. There's a 1 over here. What about sin x? So I'll have to convert sin x into half angles as well, right? Let's do it. 2 sin x by 2 cos x by 2 dx is what I get. This is what I get. Is that okay? Yes. So integral of e power x is okay along with that. Now I can maybe convert them, separate them out. So this is 1 by 2 in the denominator cos square x by 2. The first term becomes 1 in the numerator, 2 cos square x by 2 in the denominator, which is 1 by 2, sec square x by 2 actually, plus. What is the next term? You observe 2 and 2 gets cancelled, cos x by 2 gets cancelled, this becomes sin x by 2 cos x by 2, which is tan x by 2 over here. And after reaching this stage, do you see, do you see that this is the derivative of this? How do you see that? If this is fx, what is f prime x? Derivative of this will be sec square x by 2 into derivative of x by 2, which is 1 by 2. Yes, this is f prime x. Okay, and using that result, this integral will be equal to i will be equal to e power x into fx. Maybe not this function, but this function. Tan x by 2 plus constant, and that is the required answer for this question, as you can see over here, using this idea. And some common sense. Right? Therefore, this is the final answer for this 18th question. The 19th question, we have 1 upon x minus 1 upon x square and pretty simple. You can observe that directly. That integral of e power x times fx plus f prime x. If you have this with x, then the integral will be e power x fx plus constant. And in this particular function, I, you have e power x, then you have 1 by x, and actually you have this dx. The derivative of 1 by x is minus 1 by x square. If this is f, this is f prime. If this is fx, this is f prime x. And once you observe that, therefore, i becomes equal to e power x times fx, which is 1 upon x plus constant. That is my required answer for this question. Using this, very easy. All right. In the 20th question, we have x minus 3 upon x minus 1 power 3 with e power x. And how do we handle this? Once again, once again, take a look at this. I have e power x, right? So I need to create, with e power x, I need to create fx plus f prime x somehow. Okay, I have x minus 1 power 3 over here. By the way, the result says e power x times fx plus f prime x. Let me write the result first. e power x, sorry, there's no integral now. Final answer is, final integral of this is e power x fx plus constant. This is the integral. Right. And in the question, 
in the question what do we have i have e power x and along with that i have x minus 3 over x minus 1 power 3 dx now if i observe this carefully what do i see that e power x is over there but there is no fx and f prime x present over here in addition so i'll have to create two terms right and f prime x is derivative of fx so let's take a look at the denominator in the denominator we have x minus 1 power 3 so this will be forming f prime x right and the function fx will have x minus 1 square in the denominator right once we have x minus 1 square in the denominator you can reduce one power by simple differentiation right 1 upon x square the derivative is minus 2 upon x power 3 right right yes derivative of 1 upon x square that's what i mentioned this is minus 2 upon x power 3 this is something which we are aware of right so i want to create a function of this particular type and i want to create derivative of this kind of particular kind of type and the important thing common sense if you apply this for reducing the power i need to create x minus 1 in the numerator so there's x minus 1 already present over there there's extra minus 2 and x minus 1 power 3 is what i have in the denominator therefore i becomes equal to integral of e power x is okay there is a x minus 1 upon x minus 3 power 3 which is 1 upon x minus 1 square okay there is a minus 2 in the numerator over here and a x minus 1 power 3 dx over here right minus 2 with a plus will become minus 2 right i have written that as this and what is the benefit of this the moment i write this i realize okay if this is fx what is the derivative of fx so 1 upon x square the derivative is minus 2 upon x power 3 yes derivative of x minus 1 is 1 so that's okay this is nothing but the derivative of that fx do you observe this yes that is something which is important and once you observe this then you can write the integral e power x times fx plus constant and that is my final answer for this question using this important integral right that's the final answer for this 20th question 21st question says you have e power 2x times sin x and how do we handle this okay e power 2x sin x the way of handling this kind of expression is can we solve this again with the help of something called the ideas that we have just discussed e power x times fx plus f prime x you would realize okay this will not be easy so uh, in that case there's another idea actually that would be useful over here let us write i as e power 2x into sin x dx and try to integrate this using pi parts right try to integrate this using pi parts for pi parts this is exponential function this is trigonometric function and i late tells me that exponential will be the second function exponential and trigonometric exponential will be the second function so this will be taken integration and this will be differentiated so that becomes okay i is this particular function that is equal to first function times integral of second function e power 2x by 2 minus integral of derivative of sin x which is cos x times e power 2x by 2 dx okay what does this become this is e power 2x by 2 times sin x and there's a minus 1 by 2 over here and the integral you have e power 2x times sin x dx oh there's no sin x there's a cos x over there not sin x cos x e power 2x cos x is what you get okay if you see this particular integral over here this is again similar to this right similar to this only because at this stage we thought of applying by parts we reach this stage again we'll think of applying by parts over here and consider the first function and second function the first function will be this cos x the second function will be this e power 2x right and with the help of this i write i is equal to e power 2x by 2 sin x minus 1 by 2 is there okay in brackets what you'll get first function which is cos x times integral of e power 2x integral of e power 2x is e power 2x by 2 minus derivative of cos x which is minus sin x integral of e power 2x which is e power 2x by 2 
dx is what I get in the bracket. Please take a look at that. Take a look at that complete expression. What I have done over here is first function times integral of second function. That's the first step. Minus derivative of cos x times integral of e bar 2x which is there. I applied by parts on this. Now once you reach this stage, the thing simplifies to what? This is e power 2x by 2 sin x minus this is 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 which becomes 1 by 4. So e power 2x by 4 cos x is what I have. Do you observe that? Yes. And this minus 1 by 2 comes over here. Minus 1 by 2 minus minus 3 minuses are there. So okay, there remains a minus over there. Then you have 1 by 2 and a 2 that becomes 1 by 4 integral of e power 2x times sin x dx. Do you observe this? Right? This is important to observe. Once you observe this, this is e power 2x times sin x and once again I reach an integral of this form, this form or is it of this form or is it exactly same? e power 2x times sin x dx, this is integral and this integral has been called i. We have reached that same stage. Are we moving in a circle? No, actually we have reached to a conclusion at this stage. What can be write it as? This is i which is equal to e power 2x by 2 sin x minus e power 2x upon 4 cos x and what is this? This is minus 1 by 4 is okay. This is nothing but that same i that we started with. Yes. So I'll write it as i. What's the harm in that? There's no harm in that. Yes. Okay. That's pretty interesting because what you now have is i in terms of i and we can maybe rearrange and get i from here. This is a linear equation in terms of i. Yes. Integration? What happened to integration? Oh, we have been integrating, but we did not integrate anything over here. No, but this is i, that same i, right? So actually we have reached a stage where we can, we can replace this integral with i and we have reached the final integral value. This 1 by 4 comes over here, becomes 1 plus 1 by 4, which is 5 by 4. i is equal to e power 2x by 2 sin x minus e power 2x by 4 cos x. Plus a constant of integration will have to be introduced over here. And why do you integrate uh, in, inside a constant of integration at this stage? Because we are writing the final integral. You remember, you recall, in by parts, while applying by parts, in this we do not write the constant of integration. In this we do not write the constant of integration because it becomes redundant. But if we replace this, this particular integral with i, we'll have to introduce a constant of integration. As simple as that. Let's call that constant of integration c1 for now because i is still to be found. i will be equal to multiplying by 4 by 5. So 4 upon 5 will be 2 by 5 e power 2x sin x minus 1 upon 5 e power 2x cos x plus 4 by 5 c1 let's call it c. 4 by 5 c1 let's call it c that's the required constant of integration. This is my final answer for this question or you can write it in another form as, I'll explain, another form as, take a e power 2x common and take a 5 in the denominator common. What you get is 2 sin x minus cos x plus constant of integration is what I see. This is what I have. e power 2x by 5, 2 sin x minus cos x plus c. Now this is another interesting formula which we'll discuss in the live session. Right? Well, this keep this, we leave this for the live session, right? We'll discuss this formula there, where we have e power x sin bx something of that sort, right? So such kind of results can be obtained with that formula, such kinds of questions can be handled there. But this is the method in which, by which we get this answer over here. And that's a complete solution of this 21st question. 22nd question says, integrate sin inverse 2x upon 1 plus x square. How do we do that? Okay. 2x upon 1 plus x square, the first thing that I observe is, this is an inverse function, but yes, it can be simplified. It can be simplified using concepts of ITF, not integration, using concepts of ITF that, okay, you have y is equal to, I'm not writing integral, mind you, 2x upon 1 plus x square. And you see that if you let x as tan theta, let x equal to tan theta, what does it become? This tells me y will be equal to sine inverse. This is 2 tan theta upon 1 plus tan square theta, which is nothing but sine 2 theta. 
this is sine inverse sine 2 theta and this is actually equal to 2 theta when we are dealing with NCRT we will write it as 2 theta otherwise it will be either some 2 n pi forget it, will come over here right in terms of 2 n pi or n pi so this is sine inverse sine 2 theta which is equal to 2 theta and what is theta theta is if you observe theta is tan inverse x actually this is a substitution that we make and we reach this is 2 tan inverse x we reach this stage y is actually 2 tan inverse x okay so instead of this function what do we have we have this function so i therefore i which is integral of sine inverse 2x upon 1 plus x square dx this actually simplifies to 2 tan inverse x dx this actually simplifies to this and now for integrating this it is not difficult right what we'll do is tan inverse x as the first function and let's take this 2 as the second function this is u and this here is v and apply by parts so first function remains as it is integral of second function is 2x minus integral of derivative of tan inverse x which is 1 upon 1 plus x square integral of second function which is 2x dx oh 1 plus x square if 1 plus x square is taken as t then 2x dx being dt this is dt upon t integration is very simple this is 2x tan inverse x minus this becomes log modulus 1 plus x square plus constant this is my required answer integration as you see using by parts integration this step is not difficult and this step is very simple with the help of simple substitution what is the substitution 1 plus x square is equal to t that tells me 2x dx becomes equal to dt and orally you can say that this is dt upon t the integral will be log mod t which is log mod of 1 plus x square obviously 1 plus x square is always greater than 0 so this modulus can be replaced with the normal bracket right this is what you can say and that's the final answer for this 22nd question as you can see over here in the 23rd question we have integral of x square times e power x power 3 how do we handle this not a difficult approach not at all difficult i is integral of x square e power x power 3 okay so x power 3 we know that x power 3 the derivative is present over here let us take it as t and that tells me okay 3x square dx becomes equal to dt therefore i is equal to integral of x square dx which is dt upon 3 and e power t is what i have very simple yes 1 by 3 is okay integral of e power t is e power t plus a constant so 1 by 3 is okay this is e power x power 3 plus constant and which of these is correct 1 by 3 should be there and there should be e power x power 3 the correct answer is this option a as you can see over here 1 by 3 e power x power 3 that's the correct answer for this simple question question number 33rd 23rd in 24th question we have integral of e power x sec x 1 plus tan x okay if you have e power x then recall fx plus f prime x if this is there in the integrand this integral is equal to e power x times fx plus c okay if you remember this then let's write this integral i e power x times what do we have sec x plus i'm multiplying that sec x inside the bracket sec x plus tan x sorry this is sec x times 1 plus tan x sec x plus uh, sec x plus sec x into tan x is what i get and this will come in the bracket e power x remains as it is if you want to integrate this do you see that if this is function that this is nothing but the derivative of that function the derivative of sec x is sec x tan x so the final integral e power x fx which is sec x plus a constant of integration is what i get e power x sec x plus constant of integration is what i get that's my correct answer yes option b is the correct answer for this particular question as you can see over here is that all yes that's all in this question with this we come to the conclusion of this exercise number 7.6 from the chapter integrals for you in the next session we'll be talking about another exercise tell them all the best